I think that one thing that people engage with in thinking about the humanities, it, it sounds like it's the liberal arts and it's our education and it, it makes us better in some vague way. But when you actually get people talking about what it means to them, they can think of a teacher they had, they can think of the first time they ever read Dostoevsky or the first time they ever heard uh, Mozart's Jupiter Symphony or the first time they ever saw Michelangelo's Pieta or it's, uh, something came in a traveling show and they went to the museum and stood online and suddenly they realized why people were standing online. And everyone has a different path into the humanities, but of course everybody has a different path after they encounter the humanities too. It, it's not that once, once you are shaken and, and changed, uh, we all become the same, but we can all understand that engagement. The orators taught that anyone who needed to speak effectively needed to study music because you needed tone, you needed gesture, you needed proportion. Uh, they, they explained that, uh, of course, they didn't want you to become an actual performer because that would be demeaning. However, anyone who wants to be able to judge art and wants to be able to, uh, that is, wants to have a, a, an educated taste, uh, and wants to be able to communicate effectively to anyone. And the art of rhetoric was the art of communication. You needed to be able to, uh, to argue a case. You needed to be able to praise, uh, to, to give a talk in honor of someone. You needed to speak at a memorial service. You needed to uh, go to the Senate and, I mean, the, the era of Athenian democracy, you, you might at any point have to say something. Uh, that would be persuasive and music, studying music was one essential way to learn persuasion. And throughout history, we also look at the ways in which uh, music itself is informed by rhetoric. So it ends up as a, a two-way street of communication. Mm -hmm.